The Egyptian religion was focused on death. Death was a vital part of the Egyptian belief system. Um, the Egyptian belief was, as we discussed, was sort of cyclical. It was this sort of concept of a, a constant kind of rebirth. Not necessarily reincarnation, but sort of a, a movement into another realm, another life after this one. And so the, the life in the afterlife was not that dissimilar to the one here. Um, you needed a place to live. You needed food. You needed things to do. And so the Egyptians buried their dead with grave goods. Uh, for the elite classes, these could be very, very elaborate. Um, we will see pharaohs buried with, you know, thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of objects made of precious materials. Um, but all of these were meant to sort of serve a practical purpose. You know, chairs to sit on, games to play, weapons to hunt with in the afterlife. These all had to be provided. The earliest Egyptian tombs in the pre-dynastic period were called mastabas. Um, they were these sort of low-lying trapezoidal shaped buildings like we see here with the tombs underneath. So these are basically houses for the dead. The first pyramid is basically a series of mastabas stacked on top of each other. These were made for a pharaoh named Djoser and built by a guy named Imhotep. Imhotep was highly regarded during pre-dynastic Egypt. He was the high priest, high priest for Djoser. Um, when he died, uh, Imhotep was elevated to a, a son of a god's status. So this is a guy who had a, a lot of power and a lot of prestige and was brilliant. Um, he was this brilliant architect. In fact, he's arguably the first architect whose name we actually know. Um, so, you know, this is a guy of tremendous influence, and uh, he created, by all accounts, the first pyramid. Now, it's not what we would associate with the Great Pyramids of Giza. Uh, this is a step pyramid, so it's basically a series of five mastabas st stacked on top of each other. Uh, you can see, um, you know, you can, if you look down the side, you can see it's not smooth. Uh, this would have been uh, covered, though, however, with limestone, uh, just like the Great Pyramids of Giza were, giving it this sort of white appearance. This is a sacred mountain. This is a holy mountain. Uh, we've seen this before in um, uh, Mesopotamia in Sumer with the ziggurat, although the functions here are different. The ziggurat is a, an artificial mountain made out of mud brick with a stone temple on top. The, um, the, the step pyramid of Yozer is entirely made of stone, so this is the first fully stone structure in the history of the world. So this was all made of stone, and it is not a temple. It is a house for the dead. And it is not a singular object, but it is part of a much larger mortuary complex that was used for a 30-year ritual, or ceremony, I should say, uh, commemorating the pharaoh. And so it is filled with dozens of buildings, uh, many of these buildings are actually dummy buildings. They're, there's nothing going on inside. In fact, they're generally filled with rubble. So these are almost like movie sets. Um, so these aren't buildings that were necessarily be, be meant to be used by uh, the living, but were, once again, made for the dead. There are buildings that can be entered here. There are temples for the pharaoh. Because the pharaoh, in the after his death, was worshipped as a god, so there would have been pharaohs, or there would have been temples located near the pyramids, and there are located near the pyramids as as places for worship of the pharaoh by the priest. Uh, the entire complex is surrounded by a large limestone wall, um, something like fifty four hundred feet. Uh, around 34 feet tall. So this is a massive structure meant to separate it from the its environment. This is a sacred spot. This is a sacred space. Uh, there are 14 um, doors, 13 of them being artificial, placed around uh, the walls. Only There's only one true entrance uh, into this structure. 
The facades of the building are decorated with columns. On the left, we see uh, columns with capitals resembling papyrus plants. These are symbols of Lower Egypt, as we've already talked about. And on the right, we see fluted uh, columns. These are meant to resemble reeds. Egyptian columns were based on plant forms, so you were, we're going to see papyruses, we're going to see lotus flowers, we're going to see reeds, we're going to see lots of, lots of sort of vegetal um, kinds of decoration. Um, these, these columns are called fluted though, these sort of grooves along here. Uh, are called flutes, and this is something that we will see also in ancient Greece and many places in the ancient Mediterranean world.